my name is Ryan Paxton, I'm 21 years old. I work for Bakua Estates at Carter Hawk Farm. Well, through the winter I'm fatting up the store cattle. Some days I work with sheep. Like through the summer it's tractor work and like silage and harvest. It's a different job every, every day. I enjoy it a lot. When I left school, I went and done the land-based industries course just because I wasn't sure what I was wanting to do going to farming or gamekeeping or and that gave us a good idea of what to pick and then after that I went on to level one and then progressed to level four and that's my apprenticeship finished now. We're going to college you learn all everything that you need to know to get the basics and then just worked through college and worked hands-on and just learn a lot more through that. Basically what happens is the college's role in all of this is to provide the training and a bit of support as well for them through that apprenticeship scheme. Currently looking after about 9,000 acres on Bow Hill Estate. Um, we currently employ nine, nine full-time members of staff, including myself. Stock-wise, mainly livestock business, so we're running about uh, 450 cows and 4,500 sheep and uh, gross marble as well. So it's a mixed enterprise. We've been taking on apprentices for uh, probably eight, nine years now, um, working from a, a level one right away through to a level four. So our, our place is to give someone a chance, uh, and not all of them work out, but um, you know quite a few of them do. So um, so we try and encourage that. We need to encourage more folk into the industry. So so unless we do it, no one will do it. There's not really any um, defined time scale. It's a, it's a, you know, it's a programme that I would say most apprentices would get through in 18 months to two years. If they really work hard and they get a lot of support from the farm, they might get through it in a year. But they have to at least see the full farming cycle, cycle from, from you know, spring right through to the following spring. Well, to start with, they'll work with the shepherds, so they, you know, the marking lambs and the vaccinations and all the rest of us. Any programme like that is pulled in for, for working with the shepherd. It is a benefit to ourselves to have an extra hand there. Um, so we're starting with that kind of basic workload. If they can, if they if they pick up what they're doing with the sheep, they can move across to do the cattle, and then once after that, they're they're pretty well able to do the job themselves. They have a portfolio. Uh, that they work through. What will happen is um, Dave would come onto farm and he'd say, Ryan, what are you doing this week? And and Ryan would, would feed back to him and tell him and Dave would just follow him that day. And, then, and if there's a certain task he had to do, but perhaps it's maybe service a tractor, Dave would actually watch him doing it and um, have a checklist. And when he's happy that Ryan's fulfilled all the criteria in that checklist, he'd be signed off as completed in that particular element. If an apprentice comes to the college, gets a spraying certificate, that's worth a lot to the farmer. But at the end of the day, they're going to get a, an employee that's uh, qualified to, to carry out the tasks on the farm. And it, as you know, in agriculture just now, and most industries, legislation, they, they need to get that ticket to do certain jobs. That's where the modern apprenticeship's fundamental. Um, you know, the guy can come in and go around sheep, but doesn't understand the practicalities behind you know, different issues. Uh, health and safety is now becoming more of an issue. The guys have to check machines off every morning. Um, but it's also a benefit to us that they do that because it means we've got a lower uh, repair liability. Well, every Monday morning we do pre-checks on the tractors and uh, it's just oil, like everything that's needing to be safe and you take it off on that iPad and if there's something wrong you can take a photo of it and it'll go to Sean's computer and that he knows it's wrong and they can get it fixed. Now in agriculture, you can't just go out and jump on a tractor and, and spray a field or spread fertiliser. They've got to calibrate that machine. So we'll, we'll teach them about the numeracy and the ICT that goes into, into that side of the industry as well. Well, there's a lot more technology involved in agriculture now. Um, so we're looking at EID tagging in all the cattle and sheep. So now that's becoming a, a more of a recording issue uh, because everything is now individually reconciled. So it's not just a case that you have 500 sheep in the field, you, you have 500 there, but you know every individual tag. The feeder wagon, all the feed that's going into the cattle, it's on a little computer and it goes straight to Sean's computer so you can see what's getting fed and the rations that they're on. Even if you vaccinate them, it'll go onto the computer. 
and different tasks will be recorded on quality and, uh, and like an assessment on, on the job. By engaging the guys and doing paperwork, it keeps them right, keeps us right. There's a lot of recording to do as far as allocations of feeds uh, and, and for health and safety purposes. So if we don't encourage the guys to, to learn that, they'll never understand it and, and it's a whole package thing. You're going to college and you're getting to work at the same time, so you're not at college 24-7, you're getting to learn hands-on as well, so you're earning money and learning at the same time. i got a house with the job, so I'm living on the state instead of travelling back and forward. So when we go to a level, uh, you know, a full-time apprenticeship, uh, then uh, so they're on farm pretty well 100% of the time, but maybe a day a month in college, we pay them for the day. Uh, so we pay them a wage for the day time they're in college, obviously, but the benefit to us is we get a training, uh, like your forklift on the ATV gets you to the college, which means we're not outlaying that money. The guys that we're investing the time into, we want to really uh, begin a return uh, and, and keeping the guys out rather than just being tight with the money. That, that's a company policy that we, we pay the minimum as far as the uh, agricultural wage rather than the minimum what you would have to pay them. Um, but we are looking to move them on to what they call a life wage, which is higher still. It's so long-term investment. It's no investment just looking at what you're doing now. It's actually long-term with, with review to uh, succession for 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 you know retirements and whatnot. So that's where we're coming in. We need need new blood in, um, and we need to encourage that. It's really rewarding that these young lads like um, Ryan that you've met this morning. You know, Ryan came to us as a 15-year-old lad on an intro to land-based industries. He progressed through agriculture. He got a placement here at Bowhill and um, you know, now he's a fully fledged worker up here. And I think that's the key point, it's a real working environment. They're getting the best of both worlds and you know, that's, that's our future workforce. And you're rather than trying to pull someone that's set in his ways and trying to adjust them, you've actually got someone that's working to the practices you want them to do. Obviously I'm keen to keep him long term and regardless if he works for us long term, he's not got something that he can walk away with, whereas if he came just as a farm worker, he probably wouldn't have anything like that in qualifications. So I think from that point of view, we've, we've achieved what we wanted to do and set out to do and, and Ryan's met his goals and probably exceeded them, so yeah, it's a good result all around. The best thing about my job is I would say calving time is the best time of the year because you're getting to see all the calves coming into the farm and then you're getting to see them all growing up. Well, when I progress, I finally want to be cattleman or even head cattleman if I could get that far. And it's just a great job to be in. You just have to love it to be in it though. You can't just do it.